What was the most messed up thing you saw at your school? Story one. Some kids were punching a mason jar lid that we used to seal a jar with some bug in it. They were doing it as some sort of who's tougher test. When the teachers see this and sees they have small scratches on their knuckles, she proceeds to tell them that the bug was poisonous and that they will die very soon since they drew blood punching the lid. We were maybe 10 at the time. She made them write goodbye notes to their parents and make goodbye speeches to class. We were all tripping because we believed her too. It was wild. All right, let me get this right. So this teacher told 10 year olds that they will die. That just like, I don't even have to say any more. Like, that's not funny. Like you're telling a whole classroom filled with 10 year olds that they will die. Please tell me this teacher was fired. Like, I don't know what, like if he, she was trying to prove a point or I don't know, but that's just, that's just bizarre. I think as punishment, I think the best karma is the principal can be like, oh, you're going to get fired because you did that. And then not actually fire her, but you know, kind of like give her that sense of like impending doom. Story two. Not saw, but I did experience the aftermath. A kid at our school died once while on a school camp. They were way, 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 way out in the Australian outback. The teachers made barbecue for the kids, and one of the boys, for some reason, ate the food. Kebabs, without asking what was in them, even though his parents had filled out his permission form indicating clearly they had food allergies. Long story short, hardcore anaphylaxis. Their house wallet shut, fell to the ground, foaming. School nurse stabbed him with every single EpiPen they had in the medical kit. Nothing. Nada. Zip. F all happened. Picked him up, threw him in the van, and sped out of the campsite at top speed down the road. They were so far out in the middle of nowhere that there's no phone reception. Can't do anything. Can't call for an ambulance, helicopter, nothing. Finally got to the nearest town, called emergency services. Helicopter arrived, loaded the kid onto it, started treatment, flew straight back to town, never made it. Dead before the chopper landed. I was working at the school at the time. I had a job offered by the school to graduates which I accepted and found out all the details from the school nurse. This is a very uh, sad story to read. I don't know why they worded it like it was this weird act that this kid did. Like for some reason, they worded it as for some reason, ate the food kebabs. Why is that such a weird thing? Like kebabs are good. Like this is a very kind of sad story. It's not even kind of sad. Like this is a sad story. I don't know, it just kind of sucks. Like, you know, clearly this kid just felt like, you know, it tastes good. And it just really, it's, it's a very unfortunate uh, situation, you know? I don't blame the kid, you know? The kid's just being a kid, you know? They just wants to taste some good food. Story three, do things. I saw a girl bite another girl's nipple off in a fight. I also walked into a bathroom while a mentally disabled kid was peeing at the urinal with his pants around his ankles and freestyle rapping. All right, how in a school setting do you enter such a primitive state of mind that you're willing to bite another person? person's nipple off. I'm not, I don't really understand that. Story four. A new kid at our school grabbed the art teacher's scissors and threw them over a dividing wall when the teacher left the room. They hit some girl in a different art class on the other side and one of the blades went through her cheek. We were all held after class until he finally confessed. We saw the police at the school later. He had been at our school for about a week and we never saw him again after that day. I swear there's always that one weird kid that comes to school and then always gets kicked out after like a week. I personally experienced this before. I remember there's this one weird kid. I remember him being specifically bald in fourth grade. And for some reason, he threat. I remember he threatened this one dude with a pencil. Like he's going to stab this guy with a pencil. So I remember he got all angry at this kid. And then two other guys started getting on him. And oh my god. This kid, this kid was literally was gone within a week or two. It blows my mind how problematic kids can be sometimes. Story 5. Middle school. Girl had the sewing machine needle go right through her finger. The left with the needle and thread just hanging out. Another kid had an X-Acto knife stabbed right into his wrist by accident so close to the artery. High school. Girl was run over by a bus. It backed over her, then pulled forward over her again. We had fundraisers and pep rallies for her. She made a full recovery and is still playing sports at almost 40 now. Sex in the bathroom. And Daedra Turtle was found during construction. All construction had to stop until the turtle moved out. That's really cool to hear from the school. Like, it's really nice. Like, they were willing to do fundraisers and all that to kind of help her. I mean, one could argue they didn't want to get sued. And maybe that was their kind of outlet. Sounds very pessimistic. But I'm just going to, for my own well-being, I'm just going to think the school just wanted to be a nice school. <laughs> Story 6. In grade 2, my teacher made all the students step on a child as they walked into class because he left his lunchbox on the steps in front of the class. This child was mixed race, and this was in the 80s and in apartheid South Africa. Those who refused got hit with a cane for not listening to their teacher. Supremely messed up, and I will never forget it. She was fired a year or two later for various messed up things. Please tell me why it took a year or two to get this teacher fired? What? 
like walking over a student didn't do the trick. They're like, ah, nah, you know, that's just part of the teaching curriculum, you know? Like, wait, what What she have to do that's worse than this to get fired? What? Story seven. I went to kindergarten in the late 80s in America. My teacher was this horrible old woman who would get in your face and scream at you for the smallest of reasons. One time I asked her if I could go to the bathroom and she said no. I asked again a little bit later and again. She said no. I ended up having an accident and had to let her know. I was sent to the office to wait for my parents to bring a change of clothes. My teacher decided the best course of action would be to march the whole class past the administration offices where I was seated and have them all point and laugh at me. I sometimes think about googling her name and finding the cemetery she's buried in so I can go piss on her grave. That crap has lit with me for 35 years and is only slightly less embarrassing than when I decided in first grade to read my love poem to my crush in front of the whole class. Even the teacher tried to stop me and save me for myself. All right, how, how a teacher's going to be like, oh, bullying is bad, you know, and then literally be the biggest bullies. I swear, I've said this in another video, but I swear to God, like bullies do suck in school. But I swear, a lot of the time, teachers are worse than the bullies. I know this is might be a controversial opinion, but I swear, I've had some bad teachers. Like, I've had more bad experiences with teachers treating me garbage than students. Story 8. My first grade teacher in the 1990s, America, used to take any kid who did anything bad and have the whole class circle around them while the accused sat in a chair in the middle and everyone would have to confront them about it. Why did he do it? I want to be friends with someone like you, etc. While the kid just sat in the center crying and saying sorry again and again. If the other kids in the circle didn't want to say something, she'd coax it out of them. She'd get the other kids riled up and angry and push them until they lashed out at the kid in the center and said something. It was messed up. My parents were pissed. She kept on doing it though. The other kids too. I learned just this year that the same tactic was popular in all those troubled youth boarding schools that infamously abuse children. I feel like she must have gotten it from reading about those back when those were considered innovative and new. Yeah, not to freak you guys out, but if you guys know what a lobotomy is, you know, that was considered uh, innovative at some point. We've really uh, gotten far as a, a human race. Story 9. In 1981, I was in grade 4 and we had a sadistic teacher. She'd be us for any reason. The worst I saw were two incidents. The first was when she caned a boy on his palm. She thrashed his hand until the skin broke and blood gushed out. The second was when she called a boy up to the blackboard to solve a math problem. The poor boy was so terrified he froze. She grabbed him by the neck and smashed his head against the blackboard several times. She regularly did this to him and eventually ended up in the hospital with a serious concussion. She taught there for many years and no one ever did anything about her. This was in South Africa and back then teachers were considered untouchable by most parents. If you came home complaining that a teacher hit you, you'd probably get another thrashing because the teacher was always right. She's dead by now and I hope she's burning in the deepest reaches of hell. Story 10. At an assembly in the auditorium, there was some kind of raffle. The kid who won was gay. There's maybe like one out of five or so openly gay kids in my school of 500 plus students. All those kids were bullied and made fun of for being gay. Anyway, when they called his name and he came up on the stage, it seemed like practically the entire auditorium was booing him. He went up, grabbed whatever it was he won, and flipped the middle finger to everybody in the room. He got suspended for that. This would have been around 08-09. Yeah, think about it, you know, like these students are literally actually discriminating upon this man. You know, like this is some hatred. And this guy gets in trouble for putting a finger up in defense? What? Oh, like I said, I'm gonna say again, school slash teachers be the worse than students. Story 11. There was a seriously terrible girl who always smelled bad, and she would scream at people that she was a witch, and she'd curse you. She kept bugging my buddy to sell her his Ritalin. He told her no a whole bunch of times, but finally about a week before the school year ended, he needed money for something, and finally agreed. She immediately went to the administration who called the police, and he was both expelled and ended up in Juby. As far as I know, she's still an insufferable piece of crap almost 30 years later. Story 12. Once saw a teacher fully dump out a teenage girl's bag because he was convinced she stole one of his pens, exposing her pads, tampons, phone, hairbrush, etc. Also her diary, which some random kid picked up and started reading out loud while laughing, exposing her life at home, where her mom and dad are mentally abusive towards her. All the kids made fun of her and the teacher was just screaming her about a freaking pen. She ran out and about 20 minutes later, the teacher found the pen under his papers. She transferred schools. See, I'm gonna say it again, I'm sorry. I don't wanna be annoying guys, but this teacher literally instigated, created the situation where these students were able to make fun of her. Tell me that teachers are most of the time not the problem. Tell me. Story 13. 
Back in third grade, 1997, a classmate of mine was acting out. I'm not sure if our teacher was in a bad mood or this was accepted behavior back in the day, but he made the troubled student come up to the front of the classroom. He then grabbed this kid by the neck, pinned him against the wall, and proceeded to lift him up from the ground as high as he could. I don't remember exactly what was said, but I do remember our teacher saying, I could kill you if I wanted to, but not today, as he trapped him. Yeah, that's not weird at all. The father of the kid who literally just got threatened that he would get murdered. I'd really like to see the father's reaction on that. It's like most fathers, if they heard that, would be on a on a, on a kill mission. <laughs> Story 14. At my school, I saw sort of the reverse of that. One of my teachers was an abusive a-hole who had a tendency to hit and threaten kids he deemed to be misbehaving. Even just fairly mild typical kid stuff. Until one week when this teacher calls out sick for a couple of days and returns to class with a black eye, swollen jaw, slight limp, and a thousand yard stare like he just got back from a tour in Nam or something. I'd never seen a person's demeanor change so drastically overnight, and from then on he never laid a finger or raised his voice to anyone. The official story we were given was that he'd been in a bad car accident. The actual story is that he had hit the wrong kid, or more accurately, he had hit a kid with the wrong dad. The kind of dad who knows people that settle disputes by showing up at your house late at night to talk. Whatever they did through this guy was enough to put him in the hospital, convince him not to file a police report, and make up a fake car accident story for the school. He left his position and moved to a different city at the end of the year. I want to make this very clear, I don't read these stories beforehand. With the dad comment I literally just made in the other story, it's kind of funny how that just came to fruition in this story. I, I promise, I'm, I don't read these stories, so this, this is kind of a coincidence that, you know, the dad thing, you know, I said it. I said it. Story 15. I had a psych professor who just disappeared in the middle of the semester. We came to class and someone new walked in and said they were asked to sub for us that day. But they had no idea why. Ended up subbing the rest of the semester. Turns out some students who followed his Instagram saw that he had finally proposed to his girlfriend of like 10 years and they presumably just up and left together. He was always telling us about how he'd be wanting to do it, but he just didn't have the guts to. So kind of weird, but I guess it turned out okay for everyone and we're just all proud of him. Wait, how, how is this the most messed up thing? This was like most messed up stuff, right? Yeah, what was the most messed up thing that happened at your school? How, why is this in here? I'm sorry. Story 17. When I was in first to second grade, we had an extremely friendly janitor who could be found in a small office, and he would close the door and give you some candies. I heard about this and never believed my friends, but I decided to go see him on one of the breaks. I know what you think, but stay with me. I knocked. He opened and asked me what my name was and what I would like to do when I grow up. He gave me two candies and said thank you for visiting. Yep, just a normal dude who likes kids. Also, we had a computer class where we were taught stuff like paint, word, PowerPoint. We had about 20 Pentium, one computer. One day all the computers were gone, disappeared, and so was he. The candy giving nice. Listen, no one ever said that you can't be nice and a thief. Story 18. There was a special needs kid that was a huge John Cena fan. He would come up in the middle aisle in between all of the buildings where everyone hung out before first period in a Cena shirt, hat, and chain while singing the theme song. And he would actively challenge people to fights by punching them in the face. He was a small kid and we all knew he was special, so we just let it happen without incident. There were several other several race and gang fights that would amount to 30 plus people just destroying each other. Not gonna dox myself, but there are videos on YouTube for proof. During one of the race fights, I watched a very large Samoan dude lay out several fully grown adults while they tried to break up the fight, including the SRO and vice principal. We were told on several occasions that the reason why we had to carry 40 plus pounds of textbooks up and down a bill every day was because they didn't trust us to have lockers due to weapons. My weight training teacher knocked out a kid while using brass knuckles, which he, teacher, openly admitted to carrying on him every day. There were multiple occasions where all the teachers would get replaced by substitute teachers, under cover cops, whenever we would have a suspected school shooting slash bomb threat. Perhaps least surprising out of all that, my parents pulled me out during sophomore year because I was dealing drugs, ditching, and getting into fights. I'm doing pretty well now as an adult. High school is pretty effed up though. Yeah, I don't know why. I'm, I'm gonna say this, but I swear to God, some reason Samoans are just built different. Samoans just are always diesel, you know, just overly strong. I don't think I've ever heard a fight story where the Samoan dude loses. It always seems like a Samoan guy just destroys anyone in a fight. Story 19. This was primary school. We would have been around 10 years old. 
There was an attempt to bring special need kids in and integrate them into our classes. One guy was just so odd. It wasn't going well. While morning recess, we're out playing on the swings and monkey bars and a girl screams. We run over and this special needs guy has blood running down from where his ear used to be. He's also dragging an open egg container behind him tied to a piece of string. In that container is the missing piece of ear. He cut it off with scissors. That's how the special needs integration program ended. Story 20. When I was a teacher, years ago, I had a fourth grade student who was an absolute nightmare, hitting other kids, throwing all the stuff from his desk all over the room for no reason, cussing out teachers, etc. I hated that kid, but I tried to keep in mind that it wasn't the kid's fault. Society had failed him. He had no dad, his mom was an alcoholic slash drug addict, and he lived in poverty fending for himself. Though I'm not religious, I would say a effing thank you Jesus prayer on the days he didn't come to school. Those actually were pretty rare. I suspect he usually managed to get himself on the bus and get to school because it was the only place he got any food. After a while, I was somehow able to get his mom to come in for a conference to talk about the situation. She came in drunk and started yelling at me that I was a dumb mf'er who was picking on her son. This went on until the principal came in and pulled her by the arm out of the room. So the days went along. One day after school, I was straightening up the room and noticed there was some writing on one of the books I had set up as a part of a little classroom library. This was a poor school district. There weren't a lot of books available for the kids, so I had brought in a bunch of my own favorite childhood books, Charlotte's Web, the Narnia books, etc. I started looking through them and saw that the awful kid, I easily recognized his writing, had written F.U. in pen on a bunch of the pages in multiple books. I had a bit of a meltdown that evening, but the days went on. One day, the kid got angry about something and started picking up chairs and hurling them across the room. He wouldn't stop no matter what I said, and he almost hit a girl in the head with a chair, so I grabbed him by the arm and basically started dragging him down to the school office. The whole time, he's trying to hit me in the nuts and screaming that I can't touch him. He's going to sue me, blah, blah, blah. We were on the second floor, and we had to go down a flight of stairs to get to the office. Right as we're almost to the steps, he managed through his flailing to hit me in the crotch. Oh man, I'll be honest, I came so close to ruining my life right then because I just about chucked that kid down the stairs. It was like 20 steps too. We both would have been royally effed. I didn't do it though. Instead, about a week later, I had a panic attack driving home from school. I thought I for sure was having a heart attack and went to the hospital and in the ambulance and everything. I did manage to finish the school a year after that though and then quit. But here's the effed up thing. I went on to different cities to teach in rich suburban schools where I made more money and had a way easier time of it. And you know how some of the kids will give gifts to the teacher at the end of the year? I got pretty extravagant gifts sometimes from the kids in suburbia. I once received a $100 Best Buy gift card. One time a rich stay-at-home mom sewed or knitted or whatever a super nice blanket of my favorite sports team. Those were all great, but were forgotten about pretty quickly. I don't teach anymore, but the one gift I ever received from a student that I still have is a chipped and broken little ceramic tiger. That kid that I almost chucked down the stairs gave it to me on the last day of school. He put it in my hand without saying anything and walked away. This story really does break my heart because like, you know, some people might read this like, ah, oh, you know, what an annoying kid. But this kid is like, it's a cry for help. I'm telling you. And these stories like this, you know, these are kids that are just let down by society. And it's just, it's so sad, you know? And there's nothing like, I don't want to say there's nothing you can do, but like, it sucks because, you know, they can really just kind of disrupt the classroom and they can like ruin your days and make life so difficult. But at the end of the day, they're just kids. Story 22. Fights that got out of control. During a German lesson, two guys in front of me started arguing about a pen or something. But it escalated big time. It started with arguing, then shoving, then chairs going and fist fighting. This was mid-lesson while we were all writing and the teacher was at the front of the room, etc. Well, they kept on going and ended up rolling over a desk while people got out of the way. They somehow made it to the front of the room and were just teeing off on each other. The teacher was a very small woman, tried to squeeze in between them to push them apart, but caught a punch from one of the guys, then caught a punch from the other guy on the other side as well and went down. It all happened so fast that nobody could do anything. Luckily, another teacher walked past the room just as the latter moments happened and removed one of the boys while shouting for help and stuff. It was crazy. 